He said, right now, there are people out there who are less talented than you, who know less than you, who don't have as many skills as you. They're making money. You're the only one who thinks you can't. So go out there and get yours. And that was it. That was the moment. This is Journey to Point V, where you can find success stories of people who have achieved the same goals you're striving for. I'm your host, Lucia Chomo, and it's my hope that these stories will provide motivation for your own journey to Point B. Let's begin. Joe, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you in my podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me here, Lucia. Yes, I'm very excited that you agreed. And I know, Jewel, that you know, the podcast is all about reaching goals. And I saw that you had a quite remarkable transition in your career. You went from being a product manager to becoming a professional photographer. So I was curious if you want to start us off to tell us what sparked that motivation to become a professional photographer? Well, this is not going to paint me in the best light here, but it was a couple of things. I've spent my entire life in jobs that I never really enjoyed. And in terms of the question of how do you find your purpose, you know, you and I, we probably both get that question quite a bit. And that is a huge freaking question. We don't get a lot of guidance on how to think through that in any kind of meaningful way. Maybe people send you to some personality assessments. I never really found the thing that made me happy. And so for me, the journey was all about, well, I don't know what I want to do. Nothing seems that great. So I will set my goal as to make money, make as much money as possible. Mm. So as you can imagine, that led to a life of all these unfulfilling jobs and careers. And eventually I ended up as a product manager at Amazon. And I had that moment of, I get the offer letter is for more money than I've ever made. I thought that's amazing. I've finally made it. But a year later, I was so burned out. You've heard the stories about Amazon. It is one of those places where if you're not really good about setting and keeping strong boundaries on your work time, you end up like how I did, which was actually like how all of my team was. I would be working so late until one or two o'clock in the morning every single night. Mm -hmm. And I would send out emails to my people on my team. And this is how crazy we all were. I would send out an email at past one o'clock in the morning and I would get a reply like five minutes later from the people I emailed. So everybody wow. is up late like crazy, you know? And so I'm completely burned out, not really satisfied with what I'm doing. And in that time, I got married. So I get married, I hire a wedding photographer, and she, <laughs> she takes my photos. And I look at the photos she gives me. And they're, they're not like super amazing, like I don't look like a celebrity in those photos, but they're good enough. And I pay this woman $5,000. And I think, oh my gosh, I could do that. Like I could take photos like this for other people. If this woman can charge $5,000 for her work, then... I too can do the same thing. And in my childhood, I'd been taking a lot of photos. If my family had vacations, I was always the one that would create the entire photo album. I would be taking pictures all along to try and preserve those memories. So it's not like it just came out of nowhere. But when I think back on that now, as you can realize, that was an incredibly arrogant thing for me to think just because some other business owner is doing it that, oh, I can do that too. And, and so that's how I got started. And so while I was still working at Amazon, I was still working 60 to 70 hour weeks, but then I would come home, I would have dinner and then around nine or 10, I would start watching classes for photography. And eventually I'm taking classes. I'm still working so much. I was just burning the candle at both ends. You can imagine what happened. I quit. I quit Amazon. I couldn't take it anymore. And my whole timeline for when I was going to actually start a photography business, it totally moved up. You quit and you had this idea of starting your photography business. How did you go about it? I started taking classes online, specifically a lot of classes on creativelive.com. And I'm not, I'm not somebody who doesn't add for them or anything. I don't receive anything for saying that, but mm -hmm. I started watching classes. I 
watched classes on how to use a professional camera. So I got my first professional DSLR. It was a Nikon. And then I started taking classes on posing, on lighting, on Photoshop, Lightroom, so many different kinds of classes. I started attending workshops in person. And that was the initial because this is what we all do, right? When we start a new profession, we're like, how do we do this? How do we do this? But the mistake that most of us make is that we forget that, hey, if you want a business, you have to learn how to run a business. And so I think my incorrect thinking was I had managed my parents' store for so many years. They had a beauty supply store. And it's a brick and mortar. And as you know, a brick and mortar business tends to operate in a different fashion than something like a service-based business. Mm -hmm. And didn't spend any time paying attention to the business as in cash flow and how much marketing I need to do or even what kinds of marketing. I wasn't doing any networking. So therefore, I had no business. I wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you get your first client? When did you see that this is starting to materialize? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, so the easy story is how most photographers start out is you go and you bother all your people, right? Your friends, your family. You're like, hey, let me take your photo for free. And you have the kind and generous people in your life who are like, okay. And you torture them and you take a ton of honestly bad photos. <laughs> and I was so lucky that one of my coworkers from Amazon, she was actually willing to hire me, like actually hire me. And she was my first paying client, the first client who didn't, you know, give me in return like a lunch or some sort of uh, <laughs> little gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was my first client. But then I think I went over a year before having another client. And that's how it was. And it's because I wasn't doing my marketing. And what a lot of people don't know about me is my background is actually in online content marketing. In the corporate world, my background was as a content manager. I did SEO. You know, I mm. wrote tons of blogs all about the content, but I wasn't doing that for myself. So I just had no business unless once in a while, maybe like a couple times a year, one of my friends would refer somebody to me and then I might take their photos. But in terms of when I actually started to get my own business up and running, where clients are people who actually don't already know me, it's when mm -hmm. I finally got my head out of my butt and started to do my own website content and specifically SEO. So I'm, I'm known mm -hmm. as an SEO expert. Uh, I think that's so important what you, what you said, like sharing your experience that oftentimes we feel like, okay, open and they will come. Like <laughs> clients will start uh, knocking at our doors and asking for our services. And it's not like that. In the beginning is that pool period where we need to do a lot of work to draw people to us. And I, I, think it's so important for anyone starting on a journey like that to know that typically it doesn't just happen. People don't just come. Knowledge doesn't bring clients is marketing and doing some activities that would bring clients. Totally true. I'm laughing because I have met so many people who think that just launching a website it's, it's exactly what you said. I build it and they will come. It's like, no, <laughs> no yeah. one's going to know your website is out there in the billion websites online now. And that's the hard truth that we all have to learn. So marketing, sales, you absolutely have to learn those sides. And it's it's hard, though. Like you have to have that period of telling people this is what you do now. And what I was experiencing was I couldn't even tell people I was a photographer. I had mm -hmm. such a hard time. And so if you can't even tell someone what it is you do, how on earth will they know how to hire you for that? What is the highest level you took this, uh, this business and how long it took you to get there? Define highest level. Like when you felt like, okay, this is, this is working. This business is, it's a business. It's, it's running and it has some results that you were expecting to have or hoping to have. I see. Honestly, it took me three years. And that's because the first two years I spent making zero money. I had severe imposter syndrome. And then after that second year, after I got some great advice, call it signs from the universe, whatever it is, mm -hmm. in that third year, I finally 
started taking action, started doing SEO for my website, started, you know, building content. And I kid you not, within three months after doing that, I started to get inquiries coming through on a regular basis. Within six mm -hmm. months, I was fully booked. And I believe that was in 2019. So that third year was 2019. And unfortunately, like just as I was getting traction, building that momentum, 2020 happened. And we all know what happened in 2020. Mm. Yeah. So then your overnight success was three years in the making. Yeah. Uh, three years <laughs> yeah. after yeah. torturing myself with imposter syndrome, which, by the way, I didn't even know what that was back then. Mm hmm. I knew I had these feelings like I was a fraud. I wasn't like a real photographer. And I didn't know that that's a thing that people experience and that there was a name for it. So maybe around a year and a half mark after starting my business, I randomly come across something and I realize, oh my God, that's, that's what I'm feeling. That's exactly what I'm feeling. And so then I feel so great. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. This isn't just me. But then I still don't take action because... What people don't realize, we talk about momentum, right? You want to get momentum. You want to start doing things on your way to success. But not doing things also has a momentum. Inertia has a momentum of its own. How did you first realize that this is an imposter syndrome, what you were feeling? And what are some things that you did to get that out of the way so you can take action? So the first point was when I came across some kind of article online. I don't know what I was looking at. It wasn't about that because obviously I didn't even know what that was called. But I came across an article and I started reading about someone's experience. And that's when I first was like, oh, my gosh, this this isn't just me. So I had that mm -hmm. awakening. So then what do, what do I do? Which is what we all do. I, I go to Google and I fall down that rabbit hole of trying to read everything I can about this. But then I still didn't do anything about it. I I think everything I read, and as most tips and tricks that we read online tends to be very surface level, right? They'll tell you, you should journal or you should meditate. It doesn't really get at the root of the cause, which is why I think you and I do the work we do, which is to really help people figure out why are you doing this thing that you know you don't want to do, but you keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that support in my life at the time. So what did I do? I just went right back to my whole and my whole is very common to creatives or a lot of people who are in a new and unfamiliar territory is you bury yourself in collecting all the knowledge. That's really your coping mechanism mm -hmm. to deal with the discomfort of having to do something terrifying. So I'm continually taking more classes, more classes. My husband over here is like, when are you actually going to start taking photos? I was like, ouch, you know, I have my mom saying, what is this? Is this like a hobby? Because, you know, they see me not making any money. So that was also very <laughs> insulting to me, but kind of mm -hmm. true. And what happened first is actually I went to a workshop and it was with a world famous wedding photographer. I mean, this man takes the most beautiful wedding photos I've ever seen in my life. And he's not one of those spray and pray photographers where you might have to take like 100 photos to get one good one. This man, almost every single photo he shoots is amazing. <laughs> I've never seen wow. that before. And so after the workshop is over, the students take him out to dinner. And I was, you know, in that group. I take him out to dinner. And in my head, I'm sitting at dinner and I'm thinking, hey, you have access to this photographer. You're never going to see him again, most likely. So don't be a fool. Don't waste the opportunity. Ask him a freaking question. You'll never have this access again, right? So I finally scrape up my courage to ask him a question. And I go, hey, how do you build rapport with clients? And so if you don't know, rapport is a very important skill for photographers as well as coaches. With a photographer, you have to be able to build rapport because if you don't, the client is not going to feel comfortable in front of the camera. It's already like a strange experience. No one likes to be on camera. So you have somebody who's feeling uncomfortable. And if you don't address that, and if you don't put them at ease, what do you see? You get an awkward photo. And that's why mm -hmm. you see so many bad photos online today is people who don't mm -hmm. have that skill. So I asked this man, how do you build rapport? And he looks at me and he says, you lack confidence. You need to work on that. And he tells me this at a table of 10 people. 
<laughs> you can imagine the feeling. I felt like I was punched in the gut. Like I wanted to run away. Like I wanted to cry. I just wanted to hide. But I made myself smile and say thank you because I, I didn't know what else to do. You know, and when I asked him that question, I had expected him to just give me some tips, you know, like, oh, you need to do this. And, you know, if you give them these kind of prompts, like this will make them smile. You know, I once heard a photographer say, tell tell the man to smell his fiance's eyebrow. You know, I thought he was going to tell me that kind of thing, this stuff to mm -hmm. make you laugh, tips. you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. But no, that's not what I got. Like this man, he just lasered right into the thing. And it was horrifying <laughs> to have other people witness that. And you have that mm -hmm. moment. Nobody says anything. The silence is just deafening. And I look around the table and everyone is very carefully looking at their food. <laughs> no one is looking at me. It's so mm -hmm. humiliating. You would think that would be the kick that I needed to get going with the imposter syndrome. But no, if anything, that was so traumatizing. I just went right back to my whole thing of watching mm -hmm. classes and more classes. And so finally, what really got me out of it was I was watching yet another class and this man said something I will never forget in my life. He said, right now, there are people out there who are less talented than you, who know less than you, who don't have as many skills as you. They're making money. You're the only one who thinks you can't. So go out there and get yours. And that was it. That was the moment. I, I've heard that before, but as you were saying it, I got goosebumps all over because it's so true and such a great reminder that we don't need more skills necessarily. Skills are important, but what we need is just to take action on the skills that we already have. Absolutely. So what happened next? <laughs> I watched a couple more classes. But this was over a two week period. So first there was that one. And then there was another class that the person inadvertently addressed my secret fear. So my secret mm -hmm. fear was my photography so bad. I see all these other photographers work. It's so amazing, you know, so like point A to point B, the gap yeah. just appeared way too big. And mm -hmm. my secret thought was I am somehow too stupid to ever learn. And that was mm -hmm. the thing that was really holding me back. And so what this other photographer, her name is Lindsay Adler, she's very famous. She had a class where she was talking about how everyone who starts out, your work sucks. No matter what you do, it sucks. Like it's terrible. It's bad. And if you think otherwise, you are delusional. <laughs> this is why mm -hmm. so many people can't stick it through something new is they can't get through that initial period of seeing everything you make is just not good. We don't mm -hmm. like to be bad at something, right? And yeah. so she showed us photos or maybe even videos from her early days. And I was like, oh, my God, like I would never have known that was her work because just like everybody else starting something new, it's not amazing. And so that was the thing that along with the first guy's message, that was exactly finally what I needed. And so what I did was I started implementing marketing for my website, started writing articles. You you just answer basic questions. What are the questions you always get in your business? For me as the headshot photographer, people always ask, what do I wear? What should I wear? You know, um, how should I hold myself, right? Typical questions. So I just answered all of those on my website, build out content. And, and that was it. I Not lying. That's all it took. Within six months, I was already ranking on the first page of Google for wow. some keywords within a year i was ranking for like 30 keywords on the first page of google wow so it's being at peace with where you are recognizing that this is a journey that yes you have higher dream but being okay that you're here working towards that higher dream that was the mindset change that was needed it's all about acceptance when you say be yeah. at peace with where you are, it is about the acceptance. And I think what keeps so many people stuck is people are in denial of where they are. They don't want to admit mm -hmm. that they are bad at something or that they're new at something. You know, so many people have this unreal expectation that they should somehow be good at something right out the gate, which makes no sense. You know, if you mm -hmm. see a baby who's starting to walk, what, what happens? The baby falls like a million times and that's yeah. no different. Yeah, because we rarely see the journey. We see the movie star already 
playing. You see the big successes, you see the companies, you see the CEOs already when they are successful. That's when we start learning about them, but we don't know the journey. I'm always surprised when I hear biographies that the journey is just like our journeys and they were at the same point where we are and they still work through it, work through it. And then yes, they became the uh, overnight success after years, you know, the famous quote, like the overnight success, it's 10 years in the making. Yeah, yeah, completely, completely true. And there are so many things going on there. Like we tend to not see that. Most of us will never actually learn those details unless you do read a biography. And it's it's hard to accept that truth. And the other thing, you've probably seen this limiting belief in your clients as well, is people often think that those people must somehow be smarter than us, more talented. You know, it's just somehow naturally they have blessed. special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they're blessed yeah. by God or something. And yes. that's not it. Like all those people did was they had that perseverance or that resilience to keep going and stick it out. Yeah, they're taking massive action. Yeah. Jewel, if someone would start on a similar journey, not necessarily a photographer, but reaching a higher goal, what would be your piece of advice? or your wisdom nuggets that you would tell them as they would embark on this journey? There are two pieces, if you don't mind me sharing both. So Please. the first one, the first one is where I would say you really have to learn to trust yourself. Mm. And it's natural to doubt yourself, right? It's a natural part of the human experience, but you have to learn to trust yourself. And what I mean by this is you stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop asking them, what do they think? What is their advice? And you have to learn to go with your gut instinct. And for many of us, the voice of intuition has been squashed by whatever social conditioning we've had or various other factors in our life. We don't know how to listen to ourselves. And when you do something new, often you don't have somebody else holding your hand. So who do you have? All you have is you. And you have to trust that what you are trying and where you are is where you're supposed to be and you're trying your best. You have to believe that. But what so many of us do, of course, is we torture ourselves. We constantly tell ourselves we're not good enough, we're not doing enough. And then we enter these cycles of burnout. Nothing is ever good enough if you believe that it's not good enough. But the second thing I would say is there will be everybody in your life trying to tell you advice and you have to learn to find the right people for feedback. Not everyone is qualified to give you feedback because they don't know what they're talking about. So you have to find the right network and the right support system for you in your journey. And what happens to so many of us is we tend to rely on the people we already know when we start this new journey. And unfortunately, most of the people in our lives have not been on that journey themselves. And so they simply sure. lack the perspective and the knowledge to actually help you. So they'll try to tell yeah. you through their own lens or their own perspective things that just don't make sense for you. And so we often derail ourselves by trying to listen to these people because, you know, we're like a broken compass. We're trying to find our true north. I'm telling yeah. you right now, most of the people you know are not going to be it. That's so good. This reminds me of uh, Alex Hormozzi. He had a post yesterday of, of 20 ways to be poor forever. And one of the ways was to get advice of how to be rich from poor people. <laughs> mm. I'm getting advice from people that are not qualified. They, they, they weren't on that journey. And we listen to them because maybe they achieved other things that we respect or, or there are other things that we've seen in their lives that we admire, but it's not necessarily the thing that we're working on now. And one person that succeeded in one area, it doesn't mean that they su succeeded in all areas. That's really good, Joel. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your story, for being vulnerable. What I get from our conversation, like some highlights is uh, appreciating where you are arriving at that point to first realize where you are what is what is reasonable and then just taking action realizing that there is action that is needed in order to get to where we want to get what are some goals that you're working currently do well probably just like you i i sorry i don't mean to make any assumptions about you 
But for me, I'll only speak for myself is I'm always looking to grow my one to one coaching business. And the other side of it, though, is also public speaking. I really enjoy mm -hmm. doing keynote presentations or holding workshops, facilitating workshops for companies. So the public speaking side is the piece I'm particularly focused on this year, along with trying more network marketing. So since all of my background is online content marketing, at the end of last year, I sat down and I thought to myself, OK, what's one aspect of my business I've never tried? So that was one of the goals earlier this year is to do network marketing. And so I have started that. The next goal that I'm really looking at right now for the next half of the year is more public speaking, more appearances on podcasts, which is why I so appreciate you inviting me on yours. I'm very happy that you agreed to join. And what would be the best way for someone in the audience that would love to get in contact with you? I am active on LinkedIn. If you look me up, Jewel Kim. Also on TikTok, my handle is at it's Jewel Kim, so ITS Jewel Kim. And as always, my website, seattlelifecoach.org. Wonderful. And I will add those in the show notes as well for anyone that would like to reach out to you. Jewel, thank you so much for giving your time to come today, share your wisdom. I really appreciate and honor that you agreed oh thank you so much i yeah i've enjoyed the conversation thank you again 